Hey, welcome back. This is Joe from HomestudioCorner.com, and today's topic is groups in Pro Tools. Now, you may not be familiar with them, uh, and groups are not a Pro Tools specific thing. Uh, I know there's groups in Logic, and I'd be willing to bet a few bucks that there's groups in all the other major DAWs as well. Uh, but what is a group for? Uh, groups aren't specific to audio programs. If you do anything with um, any sort of photo editing where you're putting a lot of photos together in a sort of a, a collage type thing. Um, you usually use groups to hold all those photos together once you have them in place so you can move them all around. Same idea in Pro Tools or any other DAW. You want to group things together so you can move them all together. And why would you want to do that? Well, first example is going to be drums. Um, that's probably the most common thing that I use groups for. So as you can see, we've got a drum kit here. Uh, kick snare all the way out to the overheads and room mics and let's say one of these drum hits was off or let's say I want to move everything around or you know a lot of big thing you'll do with drums is you'll go in and pocket things if the timing's not quite there uh, there's really no way to go in and move this one and then come here and move this one and then come move this one that's you know kind of a counterproductive pursuit so the way you get around that is with groups now how do we do that if you're familiar with Pro Tools you know if you click on this cute little arrow down here it pulls up uh, this window here it shows your tracks and also your groups now we're gonna focus on the groups over here uh, all you do to make a group is you select what tracks you want by clicking on them they become white and to select multiples you hold down I believe it's control on Windows and it's the command key on a Mac and you can click through and select individual ones that you want if they're all in order like this you can simply just click the first one shift hold down shift and click the last one now they're all selected. Now what to do? Uh, all you do is hit uh, Command G, or I believe it's Control G on a PC, and you get this window here. There it is. All right. Now it says uh, name the groups. We're going to name this drums because I selected all the drum tracks. Uh, and there's a couple things here. You can have it be just an edit group where any changes you make in the edit window happens to, to the whole group, but any changes you make in the mix window, like volume adjustments, don't affect the whole group. I want it to do both, so we'll have that selected, and um, it defaults to um, linking the mutes and the solos, but you can also link the send mutes and the send levels as well, uh, but I usually just use the default, because um, I don't like to get in there and tweak too much, and that's all I really need it for. Okay, so we hit OK. Now they're grouped. So you'll notice when I come in here and select one of these tracks, you'll notice that they all become selected. And if I drag over now, all the drum tracks are acting as one unit. So if I want to cut this here and here and delete out a section, it does it across all the tracks. The other cool thing with groups is if you come over to the mix window and come over here, here's our drum tracks. Say I like the sound I've got, but the levels are a little bit too hot. Uh, now you can run these through a bus, which I actually have going here. But another way you can adjust all the levels at once is by simply grouping them and then you just move it. And as you can see, they're all moving together relative to one another, which is pretty cool. The other cool thing about groups is there's one default group that's always there. So say you've got an entire mix done, but it's just too loud. Uh, one of the things you can do to bring down all the volume is there's this all group. And um, all I have to do is select that, and now all the faders, everything is grouped together, as you can see. Every fader in your session, and that allows you to move them all. It also applies to all the regions in the edit window as well. Now, obviously, you may not want groups on all the time. Let's say, we'll turn that off. Let's say I want to just adjust the level of this hi-hat. Well, it's grouped, and if I start moving it, it, it moves everything. All you do is come over here and just click that, and that ungroups them for a while. You can make your adjustments, and then click it again. They're grouped again. Uh, the other cool thing is, as you can see, there's the letter A there. If you, um, depending on how you have your shortcuts set up, uh, when I hit the letter A on my keyboard, it changes the group, toggles the group on and off. And I can set that to be D for drums. I used to do that a lot, but it became so much to keep up with, I just come over here and click when I want to adjust the groups. Other ways you can use that, that's the most obvious. I like to use it on acoustic guitar, or pretty much anything, really. Here I've got, this is the same acoustic guitar part, but it's, uh, it's a it's stereo mic, so there's two microphones. And whenever I make any adjustments there, I really need it to happen to both because they're the same performance. So I simply select this, this acoustic guitar track, Apple G, a G T R one and now these are grouped together and I'll do the same for this I may even have a group actually let me show that real quick let's group the second acoustic guitar A G 
GTR2. All right, now you can see this is grouped and this is grouped. Now I can even get crazy and group all the acoustic guitars together. All A, G, T, R. And what that does is if I make a change to one, it makes a change to all of them. So maybe, you know, depending on the situation, I may want to affect all these acoustics to have them all, say, do a fade out over here at the same time. Or I want to change their end point. Um, well, that didn't work. Let's start on we want to cut all these, for, for example, and then come make a big fade across all four. But then, that's with all the groups. Maybe I don't want all the groups selected. I'll come deselect this, and then I want to make an adjustment to just this group right here. And I can come in and cut that and all that fun stuff. So that's, that's groups. Very helpful. You can do this in Logic. You can do this in pretty much any DAW. It's really helpful when you get into editing lots of tracks at a time. You want to move things around, uh, particularly with drums. I don't know how you would do it without grouping. So... If you have any questions on that, leave a comment, especially if you can. If you're watching this somewhere else, like YouTube, go back to my website, Home Studio Corner, and leave a comment on this blog post. Uh, that way all of us can read it, and if I have any answers for you, or maybe you have some suggestions for how to use groups, that'd be cool. Go ahead and leave a comment there. Again, it's homestudiocorner.com. Thanks for watching. I've got another video coming out this week. Be sure to stay tuned. Thanks.